Yes, all right. Very good. So you wrote down risk pain to last years, dorsal and ulnar side. And do you have a particular question for that case? Yeah, what's wrong with the lunate? Um, yes. Because the the referring doctor actually, I think this person did an, a, an MRI before that I didn't have access to, and mm -hmm. they they thought it was uh, Kienbach disease. Mm -hmm. um, and it does fit, but I'm, I haven't seen that many. And I mean, yes. it's mostly like cystic, yes, but- exactly. Little... It's one of the, it's actually one of the common uh, misconceptions that everything in the lunate is Kienbach's disease, which is, um, as you see, like, and you realize this correctly, that we got all these cystic changes here. So yeah. I would not think of a Kienbach's disease. It's more like the interosseous ganglion cysts that are just digging their way through the bone here. Yeah, Having exactly. also some perifocal edema, as we can see here. So we, this is basically one of the larger cysts and a lot of edema around it. Multiple smaller cysts, as we can see here on, on these ones here. And they're coming in from either one of the ligament insertions or just from anywhere from the uh, surface right. really and i mean with kinberg's disease we have these other associations right so kinberg's disease typically is kind of like ulnar. This, yeah ulnar minus variant so where you have a short yeah. ulna because there's just too much pressure going through this route and we don't have any force transmission this way because the ulna kind of like goes in uh, is out of the way and then the force transmission creates this micro repetitive micro injuries to the lunate which then ultimately leads to kinberg's disease and also Kienberg typically affects the whole lunate, and this is also not the case here. And the lunate, I mean, the ulna is either actually even a little bit too long. It's not even, it's too short, exactly. it's actually the opposite. And the differential then would obviously be ulnar and like impaction syndromes. But the, I mean, the TFCT is also degenerated. We can have a look at the other sequences also. It's not nice and normal signal, but the cartilage on the lunate is fine. We don't have any osteoarthritis or uh, contusions in this area where we could just easily make a impaction out of yeah. this. There's a little bit of like a cyst here, might also indicate there is a mechanical issue here. But then obviously when we have cysts, the differentials would also include CPPD, uh, chondrocalcinosis, that kind of stuff. This was not an orthographic study, I'm just, no, it's just no. A normal, normal no, study. No. Okay, yes, okay. There will be also some, I mean, if you look here closely, these gray areas, so I'm a little bit of synovitis happening also in the joint. So obviously then, and the patient is 54 years old. Is she otherwise healthy or do we have any unknown rheumatological disease or something like that? Uh, no, I have no no knowledge of that. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, we can have synovitis also from any kind of like mechanical issues. It's not like a big deal anyways. It's just very subtle finding here. I uh, would not make too much out of it. And for CPPD, I also don't think that fits because normally with CPPD, we have large cysts in all of the areas as well. So I think the best differential here are just interosteous ganglion cyst, no osteonecrosis, no Kienberg's disease. Uh, it's based on the constellation of findings mainly um, because it's more like a couple of cysts with a little bit of edema, but not necessarily a full blown out bone marrow edema. Uh, and we have all these other areas that are completely spared with normal signal. Normal well. marrow. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the ulnar sided pain uh, is not fully explained by that alone, obviously, though. So we have then also checked the TFCC a little bit proper. And you can see also on the T1, it's, I mean, she's older, 54 years old, but it's just generally like the signal is high or too high for what we actually would like, like it to be. Here, it's still okay. But then you know, it's very irregular surface, so there will be some some fraying here along that area here. Uh, the undersurface here is quite okay, but the surface is not kind of like degenerated. I would not really make a big tear out of it, so I would more go with degeneration uh, of the disc. And in terms of the insertions, the steloid process is rather small, but we can see how the still the attachment really goes over here so that's still attaching there nicely and the fovea attachment is sometimes hard to depict because we don't really have a nice fovea but there are some things that are going at least in that direction and then we check the axles as well for this so let's see here yeah it's just the signal is very heterogeneous from this degeneration and then obviously we can see also this grayer stuff which is this synovitis that i mentioned that's happening also in that location we can also go here on this area and this is then 
this this degenerated disk here, which is likely some form of you know the Ulna plus variants will create some mechanical yeah. issue in the wrist. So that might yeah. also contribute to ulnar sided wrist pain in addition to a like a focal inf inflammation here. Uh, also dead cyst here likely from a me chronic mechanical issue here. The other thing we need to consider with ulnar sided wrist pain would be the ECU tendon, but that looks actually not too bad. So no tenosynovitis, some internal signal changes which are very common. Uh, this is tendon insertion. So I would not make any really anything out of it. That was yeah. excellent. Then I think there is a anatomic variant here as well with a extensor digit what's it called? I always have to look it up. Extensor digitorum brevis manus extensor. I have no idea what you're talking about, which is good. Let me just let me just uh, find out. Um so there is this anatomic variant. Uh, because normally when you when you look on the axis here, we, we normally at this stage that there, there's not there's... such a prominent muscle. So yeah, it's um, it's called the extensor digitorum brevis manus, which is oh. just an anatomic variant. So this is an example here from Wikipedia. Uh, That's it's, awesome. It's a prominent muscle here on the dorsum of the wrist can sometimes mislead the clinician for tumor, as you can see here. So they have just this swelling here. But in this case, I mean, it's obviously muscle. It has the typical feature of muscle. Um, and it's just where we would normally not expect so much muscle, basically covering all of it here on the dorsal aspect of the wrist. Uh, and sometimes this is, uh, it's not so easy to see on uh, just the wrist, which is a good idea. Let me just go to, I can, let me take any of my wrists. Uh, let me just see, I need to find a way to, um yeah now let's go to the miles it's probably better because otherwise it's not gonna work um just opening oh they have a new layout okay interesting find solution e anatomy yeah i'm just uh not even sure if i'm allowed to show emails here but i don't care <laughs> i have it too if that makes any difference oh i'm not even why don't I have, oh, okay, it's a separate account, but um doesn't really matter. This is the free version, so I think then uh, there is no problem. So, but let's go to the Sagittal one. Uh, and then this is also upside down. Okay. So normally at the dorsum here, there's no muscle, right? So this is, I think that's the, mm -hmm. the thing that uh, jumps out that we have muscle where it's not supposed to be. And when we go to the axials as well, you can see axial. We see the, the muscle belly here, a little bit there at the proximal. Yeah. Yep, proximal, then zack, 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 and then only tendons left over the corpus itself. I'm, I'm pretty so, sure I've seen that um, numerous times and I've never yeah. really made that connection. Yeah, I mean, it's not like relevant for the case. It's yeah. Not, yeah. But it's nice to, to add this touch um, and it's not so nice to, you know, make, just educate the referrer, referring physician because he certainly will not see it. And um, also kind of like you can prove a little bit to the other person that you actually know your stuff. So it's kind of like bragging a little bit in your report yeah. and you bring details like that, although they are not clinically relevant. But I think it's a nice, uh, nice touch. She's having some issues with the first extensor tendon. So there's a little bit of potentially uh, tenosynovitis, but that's not really fitting the clinical symptoms. But you can see how there is a, yeah. just a touch of uh, edema or fluid in the first extensor compartment while the other extensor tendons are more or less fine. So something like Tuckerman's tenosynovitis, very mild, maybe chronic situation. Um, but yeah, they would need to correlate for this clinically. Obviously, with a little bit of synovitis there also, we just have to keep in mind that there might be some inflammatory background disease, but we cannot be sure just from an wrist MRI. Um, yeah, she's a yeah. cleaning lady, so that makes sense that she yeah. would have some tendon synovitis there, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the rest is, is just really not yeah. um, super specific, but I think that's, uh, yeah, something. So just beef it median nerve here, but that's also not relevant for the case. Okay. Yeah. All right, excellent. So should we go to the next one? Yeah. Can we go to the hip? Since yes. 